Welcome to Motorhome Rehab Ranch. Do you have a GMC? Would you like to have one or just learn more about them? You're in the right place. And a special shout out to my ranch hands that help us support us by uh, paying for the videos and asking questions and working on their coach. If you'd like to be a member, a ranch hand, at the end of this video, we'll talk more about that. Uh, we're specifically devoted to the GMC Motorhome built from 1973 to 1978 only, okay? So let's get into something that may help you understand a little bit more about the GMC. What do you think? Hi guys, it's Jim Bounds with Co-op Motor Works and Motorhome Rehab Ranch on Patreon. And... Um, Today, I want to try to solve a myth, okay? Now, if I get boring or anything like that, I brought my buddy in here. You can stare at him if I'm getting too bored, okay? So, I don't think I will be. So, how many, by the way, this is a classroom today. You need to have a piece of paper and a pen, preferably a manual, you go to book two, that'd be book B, okay? And you wanna to go to page 9-39, it's in the steering section, okay? Upper right picture, okay? This is where we, this is where we're gonna talk about today. This is the nebulous, obscure, Thing that you must start with when you're starting to align your steering that if you don't you're taking a few assumptions okay it's right here this is what we're going to talk about but <clears throat> you know me I can't just do the weed I mean I got to do weeds we're going to talk about everything below this thing and everything above it okay so I would say we're gonna start with the steering wheel. Everybody recognize this, you know, early 70s, three, four, maybe trans modes. And everybody probably has rust right in this here, All right? <clears throat> if you saw the last video that we did on uh, windshields, that there is a overlap on the inside of the lip where the windshield gasket's attached that when it drips, the water goes right there because that's the crack in the mold and it drips right in to the steering wheel. It does. I don't know what to tell you. Put a, put, a, put a towel over it. But if you have this problem, you have that problem, okay? But we're gonna go <clears throat> all the way to here, but we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna start with the steering box. Now, let me show you where, you say, oh, where do I get one? Listen, the shipping, you get a postcard from UPS. The sucker weighs a ton. And if you have to ship it to somebody and then ship it back, that's like, that's like double indemnity or something. It's expensive. <clears throat> A1 Cardone. A1 Cardone is the accepted leader in rebuilders for rebuilt parts. You need a rebuilt, uh, you know, blower for your um, something. A1 Cardone is the company that takes cores in cruise control. Okay, 36-102. Um, A1 Cardone builds it. Okay, you get your core in, you send it to A1 Cardone, they have a whole pile of them, they rebuild them, send them back. Same thing with this box. Gearbox, 27, that's for your pen, 27-7519. Okay, so when you want to buy a gearbox, by the way, you want to know when you buy a gearbox, it's making noises or it's leaking, buy a gearbox. If it's hard to move, if, you've, if everything's aligning and the thing's stiff, buy a gearbox. All the pressure goes to the steering box. Now this one, <clears throat> on the book, on the book, there we go. Okay, 
Here's the way you get it from A1 Cardone. <clears throat> it's painted black in the output shaft and the input shaft. Okay, let's let's pull we got a rubber sleeve here on this output shaft. Okay? Now if you look uh, the input shaft. It's right there. Okay? Now this will only go in one way. This is the steering shaft coming like this. It will only go on there one way. You can't get it off. Okay, if it's off, then the bolt has been whatever. But when the steering shaft slides on here, the pinch bolt goes here. So there is nothing you can do here. Does that make, does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so the only thing that's left is the input shaft. Okay? Now, <clears throat> you want to do this on a on a car because then you've got the uh, or the output shaft. I'm sorry, Jesus. Why do you say input and output? Hey, everybody know. This is the input. It's the output. I'm left-handed. So <laughs> on the output shaft, there is a uh, bell crank that goes on here and it only goes on in one position one spot okay so if you take the bell crank and put on there <clears throat> see if it's in the coach you can turn the wheel you know two ways turn the other two ways bring it you know right to the middle and you're going to be real close that'll give you a way to to gauge it but when, when you look at the bell crank, when the bell crank is on here, the bell crank needs to be facing parallel to this, to the plate on the top, on the top of the steering box, right there. Be parallel right there with that, All right? That's lined up. And if you look at the picture <clears throat> on page 9-39, it's a little, little bit clearer that it has a flat. You can see right there. The flat is parallel to the plate. Okay? And when the flat is parallel to the plate, and you're in the middle. I mean, you know, you're not all the way around. You, you, say you got the box in the coach. So you take your steering wheel, you turn it all the way one way, turn it all the way the other. How many turns? Four. Okay, if you went to two, you're in the middle, right? Okay, go to two. You're going to verify that right there. The input shaft where the bolt goes through, right there. is level to that, okay? Now, when that's done, we go, we know this one has to be there. We know this one has to be there. Your box is in. Are the wheels facing straight? Because it's on the top of the, it's on the top, on the top where it's in the center of the worm gear. Are the wheels facing straight? No? <clears throat> this is a late model drag link, and if you have this, chances are it's a piece of garbage because they've wore out, okay? The replacements that have been made for the last 20 years have an adjuster right here. It goes in and out, okay? So you loosen this adjuster, leave the gearbox right where it is because it's where it's supposed to be, right? Leave the adjuster loose and then twist it until the tires go straight. So you can look at them and they look like they're straight. You can put a tape measure on the top and the bottom of the back and front of the tires and get them straight. No, that's not alignment. But it's close enough for government right now, okay? So you do that, okay? Tighten that down. Now, everything from here, 
from, well, where does this go? That's this thing. Okay, this is the relay lever. GM has not made this relay lever for us for over 20 years. The relay levers are made by an aftermarket uh, company. They make our relay levers. <clears throat> they make our idler arms. That's the piece on the other side that holds the rod. And they make our drag links. Okay? So if you don't have a, uh, an adjustable drag link, it wouldn't hurt to have one. You could call Applied or uh, Jeff down at Okeechobee or anybody, and they have these. So I would recommend getting one. Whenever we do a restoration, the first thing we do, like this one, it's a little loose, but I, you know, probably go on mine. But uh, <clears throat> we put new drag link or uh, yeah, adjustable drag links and everything. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up. Tell you what, this is a good spot to stop episode one. Um, <clears throat> episode two is going to go when we stick this thing on that thing and this thing in here. Okay? We'll talk about that next time. Thanks for your time. See you later.